Hey guys, this is the new Low Light Innovations LLUL21, an extremely lightweight set of articulating binocular night vision goggles. I previously had my old standby Omni tubes dropped into a Low Light Innovations Aeternus housing for review. The Aeternus is a non-articulating binocular night vision housing, kind of like a 3D printed set of RNVGs, or more technically, a 3D printed set of Sentinels, although most people aren't familiar with the Sentinel housing. The Low Light Innovations Eternus is a fairly lightweight night vision device, but the LLUL21 is extremely lightweight. Not only are the pods and main body of the night vision device made out of 3D printed plastic, but weight is also saved by having no onboard battery, no illuminator, and no gain control system. So similar to the Eternus, this housing is a good fit for my surplus aviation omnitubes that do not have manual gain control. My version of the Eternus had the original rotary power switch, but the newer ones have a push button switch, the same as on the LLUL21. It's very simple on and off control because there is no third position to activate the illuminator and there's no gain control knob or gain control buttons. The main body of the LLUL21 is also smaller and lighter because it doesn't have an onboard battery. Instead, it has a Fisher port and is powered by a remote battery pack that you can store elsewhere on your helmet. The battery pack is also 3D printed plastic and is made by LLUL. This one holds four AA batteries for power and has two additional storage pockets on the outside edges for extra batteries or just weights if you want them. Since I got my hands on this device, Low Light Innovations has replaced the battery pack with a smaller one that will run on two or four AA's. The smaller version is what's shipping with the LLUL21 now, or you can buy it standalone to upgrade an older set of 21s or to use with a PVS31 or BNVD 1431s, anything that takes the Fisher plug standard. The original battery pack is actually too wide to fit horizontally in the counterweight pouch of my helmet cover. That might not be an issue for most people. I'm using an Agilite helmet cover because it's the only one that fits the ultra high cut Avon N49 helmet that I'm using. I have to have the battery pack vertical in the pouch instead of horizontal, which actually helps because it takes up a couple extra inches of cable and then there's less cable to manage on top of the helmet. There's still enough excess cable length to allow the device to be flipped up, at least on my mount, which is a Norotos Losto. The use of a remote battery pack has some advantages and some disadvantages. Part of the advantage is that by moving the batteries to the rear, the overall device weight is extremely low. A fully built out set of LLUL21s weighs less than 17 ounces with mil-spec glass. You can get it even lighter using the newer lightweight lenses from RPO. Those tend to cost a little bit more than mil-spec lenses and I don't think their glass quality is quite up to par, but they are an option if you're really chasing those ounces. The battery pack also takes the place of your counterweight. Mine feels pretty well balanced on my ballistic helmet with six double A's in the pack and no additional weights. So comparing my helmet setup with the 21 versus the Eternus, this thing has a lot of extra runtime for slightly less overall weight because I've taken a whole bunch of lead stuff off the back of my helmet and all the weight on the back of the helmet is either critical to running the device or is just additional battery weight. This probably won't balance out as well if you're using a lightweight bump helmet or especially if you're using something like a Cry nightcap. Then I imagine you will need to use some extra weight, probably replacing the double A's in those outboard storage cells with lead bars. The main reason I was interested in replacing my Eternus with an LLUL21 is for articulation. Having articulation is just a nice feature in general. It allows you to store the device a lot flatter against the helmet, especially with the Norotos Losto that I've been using since I got the Eternus. Articulation also comes in handy if you're trying to use other devices. You can rotate one of the pods out of the way in order to use a handheld thermal or an optic of some kind or check your phone or whatever. The pods are powered independently, so when you rotate them out of the way, they shut off one at a time. It's not all moonshine and happiness, though. The LLUL21 has a little bit more of that 3D printed homebrew jank than the Eternus did. This feels a lot less robust than the Eternus and particularly any of the fully metal binocular night vision devices. It's very plasticky and unlike the Eternus, this does not have an aluminum dovetail shoe. The dovetail mount is also made out of 3D printed plastic with a 3D printed plastic arm going into the 3D printed plastic body. That means there's quite a lot of flex just in the dovetail interface of the device. The LLUL21 is a lot more prone to bouncing around when you move, and also, like the Eternus, this one is still lacking any attachment points for helmet retention or stability aids. For example, a lot of devices have little hook points, so you can attach those little helmet bungees that are on the front of the helmet. 
those are not for retention, they're more for stability. So when you run around, your night vision device doesn't bounce up in front of your face, but there's no good way to attach those bungee hooks to the LLUL21. There's also no dedicated lanyard spot for a retention system, although you can still kind of hack it in there because there are plenty of gaps to get cables and cords around. Some of the design elements also don't feel super robust. The interpupillary distance stops are these tiny little grub screws that look and feel kind of homebrew. I have my concerns about them, like what if they fall out, or what if over time when the pods run into the screws, it starts to wear the pods out, put little dents in them, and then the screws are no longer providing any stopping force, so you gotta turn them farther, and that's only gonna last so long before they just fall out. There are also focus over travel stop rings on the front of the device, but they seem really jank to me. It seemed like even when I would have them set up perfectly, as soon as I ran into the stop while adjusting my focus, they would move and not really do their job. I ended up just backing them off a little bit and not really using them because I've never really had too much difficulty finding the infinite focus point on my night vision devices. I also don't find myself rapidly adjusting between the extremes of focus pretty much ever. Another potential issue over time is that the power is only delivered to the pods as long as the hinge mechanism remains tight. If it loosens up, then there's no longer sufficient contact and the pods do not receive constant power. I definitely want to keep a Torx Allen key on hand to tighten this thing up in the field just in case repeatedly articulating the pods causes the screws to loosen up. Ultimately, I think the LLUL21 has a narrower niche appeal than the Eternus or a lot of the other binocular and ultralight housings on the market. The Nocturne Industries Katana is only a tiny bit heavier than the LLUL, but it has onboard power, and the newer models of the Katanas also have a metal dovetail mount. The Eternus is still pretty lightweight, it also has a simple and robust design, and the convenience and simplicity of an onboard battery is pretty good. Not being able to detach the device from your helmet and use it standalone in a hurry is kind of frustrating, at least from a cringefluencer perspective. I can't quickly dismount this thing from my helmet to hand it off to somebody else, or film through it, or grab it out of a pouch in a hurry and just turn it on and hold it up to my face, because it's way too much work to unthread the battery pack from the helmet. The lack of manual gain control on this device could be a deal breaker or it could be completely inconsequential. A lot of devices are made with surplus aviation tubes that don't have the capability to accept manual gain input in the first place. Similarly, the lack of an onboard illuminator probably isn't a deal breaker for most people because the onboard illuminator of a night vision device is not very effective for most things. It's really for signaling, and it's also not very good as a task light. I think almost everybody is going to have some other type of illuminator on their helmet, be it a small, flexible, low-powered task light or a large, high-power umbrella illuminator to produce additional illumination when it gets dark or if you're indoors. Articulation is a big quality of life feature, but then again, so is simplicity and rugged design. It is nice to be able to whip a nod out of a pouch, turn it on, and hold it up to your eye, or hand it to somebody, or stick your phone behind it to film something, etc. A lot of that might not sound useful in a life or death situation, but until that day comes, I think a lot of us are using our night vision devices to glean enjoyment and post on social media anyway, so that is something to keep in mind. One big advantage the low-light innovations housings have over some of their competitors is cost. The LLUL21s cost, I think, about 500 bucks less than a set of Nocturne Industries katanas. That's a pretty significant difference if you're building your own nods, but if you're buying a pre-assembled housing, the prices tend to be a lot closer together because the lion's share of the cost is just in the intensifier tubes and the optics anyway. This is the third housing my Omni tubes have been in, so we went from a very heavy articulating housing to a medium weight non-articulating housing, and now to an ultra light articulating housing. At this point, I think I would accept a little bit of weight to get some convenience features back, and I think I could probably live with non-articulating binos. Anyway, let me know what you guys think. Let me know if you have any questions. If you'd like to support this channel, of course, you can subscribe at no cost to you. That's a great benefit to me. You can also support me directly via Subscribestar, link in the video description. That's what keeps me going and keeps me from having to bombard you with ads for mobile games at the start of every video. I appreciate your support. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.